Guten Tag! Over the next few lessons, we will explore the design of a vending machine controller. Wait a second, you might be thinking. We've done that before with the Melian Moore machines. That's true, but this new design will be significantly larger, and it will give us a chance to review several of the themes of this course, including combinational circuits, sequential circuits, pre-built devices, and timing elements. The first broad review topic is the finite state machine model, shown here. Our goal is to follow this model to design a vending machine controller with these specifications. 1. Outputs a high signal when enough money has been deposited. The price is 40 cents. 2. Only accepts nickels, dimes, and quarters. No pennies, no dollars, or other coins. 3. We'll assume that three sensors already exist that will output high when a coin is deposited. So, for example, when a dime is deposited, the dime signal jumps high. 4. No change will be given or stored in memory if extra money is inserted, but we might adjust that in a later model. And 5. A customer may request their money back at any time by pressing a coin return button. Without a general model, it would be very difficult to begin this design. But with this tried and true finite state model, we will begin by asking what the three main components should look like. The heart of any sequential circuit is the state memory. We have to know what the machine should remember. The good news here is that 40 cents does not mean that we must remember 40 unique states or coin counts. The smallest unit is a nickel, or 5 cents. Therefore, states like 39 cents are impossible. So, let's have the state memory represent 5 cent increments. For example, if the memory reads 110 in binary, that would equal 6 in decimal, or 30 cents in our machine. Note the multiple layers of abstraction contained in this single statement. Logic true true false is being translated as 30 cents. The next question is, how many bits are needed? The price is 40 cents, but we would need to accommodate higher values to prevent overflow issues. For example, if the memory would overflow past 45 cents, then putting in two quarters would eat the user's money. Thankfully, 40 cents requires four bits. With four bits, the highest memory value is binary 1111 or decimal 15 or 75 cents. That gives us plenty of buffer over 40 cents to avoid overflow issues. So let's use a 4-bit register for state memory. Now let's focus on the next state logic. This is where, in previous lessons, we develop next state tables and Carnot maps to find equations to control each flip-flop in memory. We could do that here, but that would be a very lengthy process. Before blindly going through the motions, let's pause and ask the question, what tools are in my tool belt? What function must the next state logic perform? Well, it needs to add the current money total to the new money deposited. For example, if 20 cents are in the machine and a dime is deposited, the next state logic should add those together and tell memory to become 30 cents. Do we have a standard device that can accomplish this? Yes, an adder. Specifically, we need a 4-bit adder since state memory is 4 bits. The next big component is the output logic. Let's again check if there's a useful tool already in our tool belt. The goal of the vending machine controller is to determine if enough money has been paid. Put another way, we need to compare the state memory to the item's price and see which value is larger. Does this sound like a combinational circuit we have used before? Yes, a comparator. Specifically, we need an inequality comparator so that we know if the exact price has been paid or if extra money has been paid. The two 4-bit inputs are the state memory and the price. This price value will be locked in 
to the 40 cent price, and the state memory will constantly be updating as new coins are deposited. On this slide, we see how the general finite state machine model has been transformed into specific devices for this application. Each of the devices mentioned, 4-bit adder, register, and comparator, are available as 7400 series integrated circuits. Isn't that nicer than developing our own equations and devices? Also note that the connecting wires have already been drawn. The adder feeds straight into the register. The register feeds into output comparator and also loops back around as an input to the next state logic. Imagine 20 cents already in the machine. That 20 cents is sitting at the front end of the adder. For a while, it is being added to no coins, so the memory remains at 20 cents. But then let's say a dime is added. 20 plus 10 yields 30 cents, which is now the new value stored in memory. That 30 cents is less than the price of 40 cents, so the output signal should be low. The structure is in place, but not all of the connections. We still need to identify how the coin inputs connect with the adder, how the clock updates the register, and how these other inputs work to determine the comparator's output. Here is the completed Model A. Pause the video for a couple minutes and explore the new connections before I continue on to explain them. First, Note that we took the cop-out approach for the register clock. This switch requires us to manually flip the clock up and down to add in a new coin. Obviously, a real vending machine would not have this cumbersome feature. We'll correct this in later models. Second, study these coin input signals. When a coin is input, it must add the appropriate binary number through the adder. A quarter equals 25 cents. With our memory strategy of 5 cent increments, this needs to be decimal 5 or binary 0101. This is why the quarter line activates the ports A3 and A1. Similarly, a dime needs to add decimal 2 or binary 0010. Thus, only port A2 is activated. Finally, a nickel needs to add decimal 1, or binary 0001. Here, we take advantage of the carry-in port. There is an unfortunate subscript notation on this device. Both C0 and A1 carry a weight of 1. In my opinion, these A ports should be written as A3, A2, A1, A0. But, now that we have identified how the ports work, we can use them accurately. Third, a coin return switch has been added down here. This is to meet the specification that the user can request their money back. If they do so, this will clear the state memory to zero cents. Finally, we reach the wiring of the comparator. A versus B is straightforward. A represents the register value. B represents the price. When A is greater than B, the output signal should be high. But these other inputs are often confusing. I call them the tiebreaker inputs. They are only used if the 4 bits of A and the 4 bits of B are equal. In that case, the circuit refers to the tiebreaker. Here we activate only the A is greater than B in line with the positive voltage. This means that A wins the tiebreaker. So, if the register value and the price are identical, both at 40 cents, then the output signal is high. This is a good choice for our design, because exact change should be enough to vend the product. This wraps up our Model A vending machine. In the next video, we will develop Model B with an additional specification, add buses to simplify the wiring, and see it in action in the simulator.